652, just about, and 9 degrees. In story time with Aunt Phil, more than 50 years ago this winter, Cordova creates a giant ice worm. And as Laurel Downing Bill tells us, that ice worm has become part of the town's lore to this day. Winters can get a bit long up here, and sometimes people can come up with some pretty wacky ideas. Uh, yeah, like building a giant ice worm. Laurel, how did this idea come about? Well, Cordova's ice worm, created in 1960, was a fitting descendant of the famous invention that came from the fertile mind of Dawson City's newsman E.J. Stoller White. And it came about after White's editor came up to him and said, there's been no news, get out there, find a headline, something that'll sell newspapers. And so White was trying to think of something that people might be interested in. A huge storm hit the Canadian Gold Rush town. And that's when White got an idea. He announced that new creatures had emerged after the storm. Ice worms. How did White describe these so-called ice worms? He said they were cold, loving creatures that had come out of these holes from a nearby glacier and that their chirping was causing Dawson's residents not to get any sleep. Well, soon news about these new creatures started spreading like wildfire across Dawson City, and people went out on expeditions looking for the elusive creatures, listening carefully for the chirps. Bartenders even created drinks called ice worm cocktails, complete with ice worms, which were really pieces of spaghetti stuck into ice cubes. It sounds like the plan worked. How was uh, Cordova's ice worm created? Well, Cordova's ice worm, the brainchild of Omar Ware, came about while he was um, sitting in the hotel that he managed. It was the historic Windsor Hotel. And he saw the lobby was empty and he was having a cup of coffee, he turned to his wife and said, what this town needs is an ice worm. So. He and several businessmen got together, raised money, and created an ice worm that was uh, more than 100 feet long, made of wooden hula hoops, aluminized cotton fabric, and cardboard. And when that first ice worm came undulating down the streets of Cordova, children just screamed in delight. It took about eight legs to carry the head alone. And immediately then, the ice worm became inseparable from Cordova's history and the annual ice worm festival was born. Is that festival still happening today? Yep, it sure happens every February. And of course, the ice worm has gotten even longer, I believe. And I understand that people loved looking at the old photographs and gleefully pointing out which pair of legs are theirs. <laughs> still happening today. That's yeah. a cool story. It is. Uh, and unfortunately for us and you daybreakers, uh, we're yeah. going to have a, uh, a hiatus, or I should say, story time with Ann Phil is going to go on hiatus. Brief break Brief because break. Uh, Laurel, she's going to be in California visiting her grandson, spending time with family. So we will resume story time with Aunt Phil in May. Yeah. Just a few months. Just hang in there.